Chapter Six of Mary, a Fiction by Mary Wollstonecraft. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Eva Gonzalez. Chapter Six. Mary was allowed to pay the rent, which gave her so much uneasiness, and she exerted every nerve to prevail on her father effectually to succour the family. But the utmost she could obtain was a small sum very inadequate to the purpose, to enable the poor woman to carry into execution was a scheme of industry in the metropolis. Her intention of leaving that part of the country had much more weight with them than Mary's arguments drawn from motives of philanthropy and friendship. This was a language he did not understand, expressive of occult qualities he never thought of, as they could not be seen in a filth. After the departure of her mother, Anna still continued to languish. Though she had in hers, he was entirely engrossed with a desire of amusing her. Had the health been reestablished, but then with a part in a tranquil, improving manner. During the years of mourning, they live in retirement, music, drawing, and reading, for love of the time, and Mary's taste and judgment were both improved by contracting a habit of observation, and permitting the simple beauties of nature to occupy her thoughts. She had a wonderful quickness in discerning distinctions and combining ideas, that at the first glance did not appear to be similar. But these various pursuits did not banish all her cares, or carry off all constitutional black bile. Before she enjoyed Anne's society, she imagined it would have made her completely happy. She was disappointed, and yet knew not what to complain of. As her friend could not accompany her in her walks, and wished to be alone, for a very obvious reason, she would return to her old haunts with trace anticipated pleasures, and wonder how they changed the colour in possession, and proved so futile. She had not yet found the companion she looked for, Anne and she were not congenial minds, nor did she contribute to comfort in the degree she expected. She shielded her from poverty, but this was only a negative blessing, when under the pressure it was very grievous, and still more so with apprehensions, but when exempt from them, she was not contented. Such is human nature, its laws were not to be inverted to gratify our heroine, and stop the progress of understanding. Happiness only flourished in paradise. He cannot taste and live. Another year passed away with increasing apprehensions. Anne had a hectic cough, and many unfavorable prognostics. Madame forgot everything but fear of losing her, and even imagined the recovery would make her happy. Her anxiety led her to study physic, and for some time she only read books of that cast, and this knowledge, literally speaking, ended in vanity and vexation of spirit, as it enabled her to foresee what could not prevent. As her mind expanded, her marriage appeared a dreadful misfortune. She was sometimes reminded of heavy yoke, and bitter was her recollection. One thing there seemed to be a sympathy between them, for she wrote formal answers to his as formal letters. An extreme dislike took root in her mind. The fan of his name made her turn sick, but she forgot all, listening to Anne's cough, and supporting her languid frame. She would then catch her to her bosom with convulsive eagerness, as if to save her from sinking into the opening grave. End of chapter 6